Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is you and peace out to the rest of you. Blackheart, it's sign of black in again, uh, asking you to hit the share button. But I want to thank those who have hit either the share or the like or the subscribe button in either case. Um, I do appreciate either one of them that you've hit. If you hit the share button, you benefited others. If you hit like or subscribe, you benefited me and I didn't even request it. So thank you very much for being that selfless. Uh, this message is regarding, um, again, a topic I've hashed out before. And that is a topic that everybody else has their stuff together. All of them got their stuff together. When I was a teacher in the United States, I was teaching in grade school, I was teaching kids. I did not teach at the university level. It was always grade school. Most of the time it was middle school. The American kids were terrible. They were uh, useless in many ways. Um, they did not have, they were far behind basic writing um, skills, reading skills. It didn't matter. When I was supposed, I was responsible for teaching them certain things according to standards of whatever state we were in, and there was no way I could do it because they had not gotten the material they needed from the previous teachers, and they were passed on to me knowing nothing, empty heads. And I would ask, okay, do you remember this lesson from the previous year? No. Do you remember? Okay. Do you remember this lesson from the year before that? No. Okay. So no matter how far back I would go to find a starting point from which they did know, I couldn't get one. I couldn't do it because they didn't remember anything except Columbus discovered America. Nothing else. I would have to say, okay, let me show you all a map right quick. And I want you to understand something. And this is the Atlantic and the lands that border it. Columbus started off his journey here in Spain. Now, here's the U.S. He made it to these islands, but he never went into North America, the continent. He didn't go into South America, as far as I know. I think he saw it. This is the truth of the matter. So he didn't discover America, per se. And I tell him certain things like, you know, 95% of human history in uh, North America is not documented. 5% of it actually is documented, but that's when the Europeans came in and they started writing it down in their languages. And the students would sometimes get enthralled, but after a week they were done. As soon as I had to give them a task to do, to synthesize their knowledge, they shut down. They did not understand basic instructions. They simply didn't do what they had to do. They were loud. Uh, they were unmanageable. They were unteachable. I was blamed for it. Other teachers were blamed for it. There were some teachers who had maybe classes of six students for whatever reason. They managed these classes well. The scores went up and then they would be praised for it. And we had some teachers that would even say, I was lucky. I mean, I got a class with six students. I wasn't this good when I had uh, 33 students last year. And this is real. Then you got to deal with the fact that these kids are medicated and on sugar highs. It was an impossible job. It could not be done. And there was no reason for me to stay in the United States. Now, why am I telling you this? Taking uh, three minutes to tell you this. It's for this reason. Now that I'm here in an Arab Gulf country, teaching English as a second language, I've come across the same anti-educational attitude among students here that was present among students in the United States. And this is at the university level, coming fresh out of high school. They still have it. Now, we understand. When I went to college, I went to an HBCU. Uh, I, I went uh, in the Atlanta area. And when I first got started with it, I first got started, we had a few classmates that were lazy. And these niggas, one of the things that was understood is if you a lazy nigga, you ain't going to stay in school. You're going to be back home next semester. But in the meantime, do not interfere with other students trying to get theirs. Do not do it. Some students lasted into the second semester, but not the first. A lot of students did not come back sophomore year. They got weeded out. Now, this being said, this was understood. My first few weeks, my first week in college, this was understood. The upperclassmen told the, the freshmen, if you don't want to stay, if you find you don't want to work, then just don't stop anybody else from doing it. Encourage them to do it. And if they encourage you, let them finish what they're saying. Don't interrupt them. Let them finish what they're saying. Let it soak in. If you still don't feel like doing it, just don't do it. You won't be back here next semester. 
And if you're lucky, you won't be back here sophomore year. This was understood. Now I've come here. And I've taught these little rat bastard that tragic, tragic desert mulattoes. And I've come across the same anti-educational attitude. The exact same one that middle school kids back in the U.S. have. Now, I don't have to deal with the violence in most cases. That's true. That's good. I'm not even threatened with it a lot. Some other teachers have been. Usually they're white, believe it or not. Strange. But I've not been threatened with that. And I don't threaten it. But I've had to explain to these students here a lot of basic things before. And when I have to explain these basic things to them, it's sad because they'll do anything to not have to listen to it. Anything. But at the end of the day, um, when I say not have to listen to it, I mean they'll do anything to not actually put it in practice. But I can finish what I'm saying to them. That's the good thing. Well, today... Actually, yesterday, I enforced one of my rules. I told a student who can't say anything in English, which means he doesn't belong in the class that he's in with me because we don't teach beginners English here. We're in the university level. We teach, we pick up where they're supposed to be uh, after seven years of middle school and high school English, and then we take them further. We don't start at ABC and one, two, three. We don't start at cat, rat, bat dog, log, and smog. We don't start at that level. They're supposed to be at least able to read short paragraphs with 90% understanding for the most part, and we would take them to higher levels so that they can actually practice uh, engineering or medicine in both languages. And that's to give you an idea of where they should be. So I went to the student yesterday, and I, I called on him to answer a question. Now, if he makes a mistake in English, there's no penalty. He just has to try. He makes the mistake. We correct him. He has to repeat the correction, write it down, and then uh, we'll come back to him later on. That's how it works. But they're not allowed to use Arabic in the classroom, not in a full sentence. Now, it's okay if one of them turns to his neighbor and says exactly like I'm saying to you, what is Shasha in English? And then the other student is allowed to say to him, uh, Shasha means screen in English. And then he can turn, the first one can turn back to me and say, uh, the cursor is there on the screen, Dr. Black. That's fine. That's, how, that's the program. So if, you, if an English, I mean, if an Arabic, uh, uh, if an English student forgets a word in English, but he's forming the sentence, he's allowed to use English to ask for the translation of one Arabic word into English so he can use that one word to finish the rest of the sentence. This is the pattern. This is actually a very effective method. But what he's not allowed to do is turn to his neighbor and go, Shlona go shasha bing lazia. Where should shasha bing lazia? He can't use a full sentence in Arabic. So, I've told them I mark you absent for it, but I haven't actually done it. They think that they have many hours of absence uh, for doing this, but they don't actually have that many hours of absence. However, by the time they find this out, they've already learned the lesson they need to learn, which is use English and make a mistake. That's better than using Arabic in an English class, even though you won't make a mistake in Arabic. I've told them you are not allowed and don't bother me about it. You're not allowed to use full sentences in Arabic during an English class. You won't get any better, especially you guys, because you're spoiled. Now, this student I saw this morning, I happened to see him on my way into the building when I got off the bus going into work. I said, what's happening? Come here, blood. Let me holler at you for a second. So I told him in English and in Arabic, you're not ready for this class. I'm just going to be honest. Now, if you have the courage um, to try English to make mistakes, I'm just going to help you. I'll correct you. That's it. I'm not even going to tickle your stomach, let alone mark you absent and penalize you. You have to repeat the correction three times to help you save it, maybe write it down, but I'm not going to punish you. However, if you keep using full sentences in Arabic, you are going to fail this class because you will not improve and you will not get into the medical college. Not because of my connections, because I don't know anyone there. You won't get in because you won't be ready. If you get in one week, you'll fail after the first week. I'm letting you know this now. Now, when you go home after class, you need to practice English for an hour a day, even on weekend days, to help you improve because you're really behind. I told him this. When we parted ways, I went into work, and then about 40 minutes later, a teacher came in, I mean, a, a, a coordinator came in and told me that... Um, I had to be sure to keep the peace in my class so as to keep my job. What, did I, what had I done other than do my job? And he even admitted, you're not wrong for doing your job. 
I'm not even here to censure you. I'm just here to warn you that the students are going to get together and lie because that's what they do. They don't learn lessons. They don't take seriously what they need to do. That's not how they operate. What they do is they simply lie and they lie on you and they will coordinate their lies. Through no fault of yours, you'll be blamed and then it'll be over our heads when the decision comes that we have to remove you from this particular uh, track and then put you over across the street uh, with the regular students. Because see, I got promoted to teach a, a slightly more advanced track of students. He said because of the pressure that they're under, they will argue over a quarter of a point before they take your advice and actually change who they are so that they can excel. So I told him, thank you. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. Number one, uh, if they do complain, at least ask the, administ the administrators over there to let me defend myself to them then they make a decision. Secondly, uh, secondly, I actually did not mark them absent for speaking Arabic in class. I just told them I did, but that was for their benefit. <laughs> I've not marked a student absent because they were one minute late for class. I marked them absent when they were six minutes or more late for class. I gave them five extra minutes. So if they're complaining about that, they're lying. That's all. Thank you for the warning. So, um, the thing is, it was more than two. And I think they were from different sections. The one I saw this morning was one of them. He went to, he jumped over my coordinator to go straight to the program director to complain to him. Why? Because even though he is a level two student in an advanced track, he can't speak English enough to make the complaint in English to my coordinator who speaks English. He went straight to somebody who could speak Arabic to complain to him because he's not even as bilingual as he should be. He's not even as close to it as he's supposed to be in order to be in uh, this particular track. He is one example and other students are joining in because I don't let them use the non-target language uh, in the target language class. I, yeah, I don't let them use Arabic in an English class and I'm not supposed to. It's not my job to do that. My job is to do exactly what the students do not want me to do. And that is get them to learn another language. Apply the rules, mark the maps, and if they don't show up by the cutoff time. And to grade the presentations at the end of the semester, which have to be delivered in English correctly. What they want is to be marked present even when they stay at home or go run some other errand. And still get not only marked present, but also get the stipend, which is affected by their attendance record. What they want is to sit up here and just throw anything together in English, bad as it can be, and still get a full mark on their presentation. They do not want to change who they are, even though many of them are better at English already than the regular normal students, they still are not willing to change who they are. And these are university students, and they will cheat all the way through medical school. I know because last week, one of the rideshare drivers that I used to take to go to work when I didn't take the bus also had another job. His main job was to work at the government hospital in the city. And he told me, oh, you're teaching over here. Oh, great. This is where we get our students from when they go on training. And some of them we hire when they finish. Listen, be serious on them. Be severe on them because we're getting students who don't know how to even put an injection in a patient. And they can't even write their names in English. And they have to be able, they have to be bilingual. They have to know Arabic and English to practice, and they know nothing at all, period. This is going to be a serious problem. We're talking about the health of the people. The rideshare driver told me exactly that, exactly that. That's what he told me. Guess what? I went in and I told my students, listen, this is what the rideshare driver told me. So what I'm saying to you is be serious about learning, and you'll be a good doctor or a good nurse later, and you'll be all right. Then this week, today, I find out that a bunch of them went and complained. What made them complain? You know what it is. And these, these are, they're still university students. They're not going to change as they get older. And one of the reasons I know that they won't change is because no one tells them to. They don't have the role models for it. Their parents are oftentimes the exact same way. So here in this culture, when they don't care about education, they don't care about it. So they become stupid and dumb and lazy. They make themselves that way artificially. They're not born stupid. They practice stupidity. 
When they care about education, they still care only about the grade and the mark and not the actual knowledge. So in no case do they actually care about the substance, which is the skill they're bringing to the table. And they go older and they get married and they have kids. And as a matter of fact, the dishonest rat bastard cheaters get married first because they cheat their way into a job, get a salary, then they can afford to get married. The honest people are the last ones to marry. Their kids are always younger than their friends' kids. You notice? Well, you're not here to notice, but you can understand how the pattern goes. So I'm saying this to say that you think Many and brothers, you have to understand, you need to get this through your heads if you're listening and, and spread this, please. Black people are not the worst off in the world by a long shot. We are all over the spectrum. We might be the most widely varied in the world. Our best may be better than others. Our worst may be worse than others, but we're not the worst people in the world. Not at all. Not even close to it. We're not the second or the third worst either. And when sisters come to you and start pointing at other guys and start saying they, 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 they do this, that, the other day, they got this stuff together. You stop them and you say, no, I know from somebody who's working in the Arabian Gulf that they, other people actually don't have this stuff together. You're just seeing the ones who got their stuff together over there in the U.S. and in the U.K. That's all. And in Canada, that's all it is. When you uh, uh, go into other nations, you start to see other people of the same nationalities that you associate with having all this stuff together in the U.S., U.K., and Canada. You see them in other countries, in their home country and in, and in each other's countries, and you say they don't have all their stuff together. No. All that conservatism you associate with the Pakistani community, you got Pakistanis working over here, and uh, they know someone who got pregnant by their own brother someone who impregnated his own sister oh yeah you'll know them yeah that's real this goes on now there's a penalty for it but this will happen you will see uh, you, you'll see someone and uh, they know some drug dealers and maybe one of the reasons they were so anxious to get a job here was to get away from drug dealers back in their home countries there are people here from Morocco and um, yeah, there are there are neighborhoods in Morocco that are run by drug dealers. Or what you thought that was only in the States? No, nah, bro. No, nah, no. Nah. So you need to get out of this idea that um, I mean, you really need to stop thinking that everybody's so together and, and you're not. I really wish you would get rid of this idea. I'm sitting up here now with my job possibly in jeopardy. Just after getting married. Because of some tragic desert mulatto niggas who simply can't learn one thing even in adulthood, and that is to change who the hell they are to get what they're looking for. These niggas don't care. If they lie and get me fired and sent back to the U.S. where I get killed by some cops, it makes no difference to them at all. They won't even think twice about it. Even if they hear later that I got shot by police officers. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, well, he should have been easy on us in school. He should have marked us present even when we didn't come to class. He should have given us A's. Because in their mind, nobody has the right to come along and make them learn anything in exchange for the things that they want out of life. No one has the right to make them earn anything they want out of life. And these are not even a violent uh, people. They're actually very welcoming. That's the good thing. Yes, they're actually very, very, very hospitable to their credit. They're actually quite friendly one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to lie to you about that. But when you make them actually work and earn what they want, they will do anything to get around it. And if it comes down to it, they may resort to violence for that. They, It has happened. There have been people from here that have resorted to violence after they've been generally nice they have resorted to violence in order to punish a teacher that didn't give them a free grade or a free mark or a free attendance that's it on a real that's what we're dealing with we're talking about 18, 19 and above they have, even at this age, tried to fight people who would not give them answers during a test. They've done this before. But you think you're the worst off in the world. 
If I do get sent back stateside, make no bones about it, um, I am going to take vengeance before I go. That's going to happen because I made my mind up. I'm not going to live under white authority and rule ever again. But as of today, I made my mind up that I will spend one and a half more school years under Arab authority. It's not because every Arab is bad. It's just because the ones that are in charge of everything are bad. They're cowards. And they're lazy. The corruption is deep within them. And they're not a people worth uh, even using as an example. You can learn from them, but do not use them as an example. I'm a Muslim telling you that the Arab uh, culture and society is a crap one to learn from. They'll preach Islam to you, light up a cigarette in the process. I kid you not. The hypocrisy is so deep, they don't even know it's hypocrisy. So, don't let anybody tell you this anymore. Do not let anybody tell you again. And, and spread this word because I'm tired of seeing comments on YouTube and on other social media about how, every, how together every group is and they're not. At all. They are so niggerish, so niggerish and trifling when you get to know them without the filtering of the United States uh, immigration. So much so that if you knew how they were, you would uh, you would never have an inferiority complex. Maybe that's the reason why they're so filtered out before they go to the U.S., Canada and the U.K. That might have something to do with it. In any case, I hope that this message is a benefit. Uh, please, definitely, before you hit like or anything else, please hit the subscribe button. Spread this, because I'm sick of repeating the same thing again. And those of you who have heard me before, you already know this, but I'm asking you to, to, to share it this time. People need to know this. This is very important. Black folks, black men and black women alike need to understand this. It is a false idea we've been given. No, we are not at all worse than anybody not not even a little bit everybody's bad everybody's bad a lot of people are actually worse than us when you uh when you remove the filtering of western nations immigration processes you'll find that actually you you may even have to fight to not become so arrogant i hope that uh this message is a benefit to those who hear it black heart sign of blackout assalamu alaikum